those of you watching this, JD is my favorite. He is the coolest dude. I would really love to go to his house and hang out and have some Dutch food. Um, is it frikadella? Is that what you call it? This is episode one of Two Meter Friends Around the World. Due to the corona crisis, we are unable to do our normal job of working in a recording studio and call it a Two Meter session. So what can you do? Make phone calls, make Zoom calls with friends around the world. Like for instance, Dana Margolin of a London-based band Porridge Radio, who just released her album Every Bad. And sometimes I am just a child writing letters to The way that our band works is that I write all of our songs and then I bring the songs to the band and everybody adds parts and we arrange it and we change it a little bit and we like make it into a full band song. And I used to be ashamed until I learned I love the game. And New Zealander Blair Jollens was also living in London and how this deserted London influenced his new video. Yeah, going into a very intense city, built up city like London and seeing it deserted, it's very airy. And with singer-songwriter William McCarthy, who used to be the singer of Augustine's, but he is uh, working on a solo career ever since two years. And round and round we go, and then I saw your face on the TV screen. Thought maybe we could talk, just you and me. I think the new generation, the millennials and Generation Z or Next or whatever, they're sort of about deconstructionism and keeping it surreal and strange and digital, but I don't know why I wrote a six and a half minute song. So welcome to my bed where I lay my heavy head and I bet on imaginary horses in my dreams. But first of all, let's go to the Australian Melbourne based band, The Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever. They just released their new album last Friday called Sideways to New Italy. Via Zoom, I talk with Frank Keeney about his new music and their new videos. And first of all, I asked him if he can still recall his two meter recording of November 2018. It was a lovely studio that I just wanted to stay there for a long time. Yeah. It was, uh, it was near the, uh, the Paradiso North, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very nearby. Yeah, just yeah. a five minute walk or something. Still in a solid state. Still in a solid state for so long. Now it's rain passing over. And the sail kept on ringing around. You finished your album in pre corona times. Do you listen to the <laughs> album yourself at this moment? Yes, I have actually, because we've started doing press again. Or yeah. We started doing press. So I left it aside for a long time as it's the right thing to do. Because, I mean, you can't really even hear it for what it is anymore once you've heard it so much. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to hear it fresh and um, it's, it jumps out at you a lot more. Um, yeah, we're really, really proud of, really proud of it. Yeah. Everything just come together sort of like we hoped it would. It was really nice putting She's There out a few weeks ago. That was like, we did the clip like the day that um, the, uh, our show when we were going to be supporting the Pixies was cancelled and that's when all the dominoes started falling. And uh, then we put the clip out maybe a week or two after that and the song out. Um, and there's something just really nice about having the new music out there and, and I, I think that there's something about the spirit of a lot of these songs which seem to feel right at the moment there's like a lot of the album the songs of the album were written from a sort of a weird place like it was after we'd got back from tour and oh, it was after having toured um a lot and then getting back and sort of 
having just felt a bit weird overseas, like really enjoy touring, but it gets to a point where you just sort of, you're a bit, you just feel a bit detached from, from anything and, you know, connections with partners and, and friends change over time. And so that makes it feel weird. And then when you, when we did come home, it didn't, didn't immediately feel right. You know, it was just sort of a weird time. So a lot of these songs were sort of reaching forward to try and like, I, I wanted this album to be a really positive um, thing to, yeah, I feel like a lot of the songs will, or well, they seem to feel right now to me. certain tightness to the band and you can feel it in the songs very much and that's what I like very very much thanks yeah it's well that's the way that we've always sort of written is that we um, have an idea and then we bring it to the band and then the band pulls it apart like a lot of the songs that we've done in the past um, have come out of just accidents and then there's a jam that we'll sit on for 20 minutes half an hour somebody will record it on the phone and then we'll listen back to it and find all of the accidents or the little bits that just weren't you know the good bits basically and then we try and pull them out and then turn that into a song and for this album we wanted to make all of the songs like that so that we would all just be involved in the songs right from the start and then just write them all together as one it's something that we wanted to really focus on for this album yeah. because it's something that we have fun doing i guess <laughs> The album is called Sideways to New Italy. I did my research on New Italy, which is close to Woodburn on the east side of Australia, on the east coast. That place is just a, it's a road stop now. Um, it used to be a town. Um, it's, yeah, if you're driving up to Brisbane, um, well, we, we stopped along there. And uh, it's just a sort of a funny little museum slash roadside stop, but it's a monument to this town that was there for a while started in the 1880s it was this like little reproduction of home this little replica of home that they made it was just sort of like the prism through which we thought of the album and and i know for me at least i was sort of thinking of it as this sort of this this you know like um idea of a portal to reach through to home or love or whatever it was just sort of this gold shining light type thing for me all through last year it was just trying to write this album, try to catch that gold light. One more thing, there is two videos actually out. She's there and Cars in Space. There's a lot of running in the video clips all the time. <laughs> I don't know, in that one, in She's There, the idea was that it's a dream where, you know, when you're describing a dream to someone and you realise when you're describing it, it doesn't make any sense. That was sort of the, the idea that it would, it didn't just, didn't just didn't make any sense, but it felt it's, it had this emotional tug or some feeling to it. Uh, and Cars in Space, there wasn't any running in that, but there was choreographed dancing, which we actually practised nice. at a dancing studio. <laughs> One of the only bands that's really dancing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's sort of like, uh, like Backstreet Boys or something. <laughs> Backstreet's back. Again. I don't know. It seemed like the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for your time for now. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Uh, Frank Keeney calling from Melbourne in Australia. He just moved to a new apartment, so that's why it looks so empty. Check out their new album, The Rolling Blackouts Coastal Fever. It's called Sideways to New Italy. Next up is Blair Jollens. Was born in New Zealand, lives nowadays in London. He is a so-called compelling songwriter. Sometimes he's being compared with people like Beck, Nick Cave or David Bowie. He likes to pay as much attention to his musical as cinematical aspects. He 
worked with people like Madonna, Rihanna and jammed with Grace Jones. It's a nice list. I met Blair somewhere in October 2019 when we recorded the Two Meter together with him and his pal Johnny and a duet with the Dutch singer Jori. During these corona days, Blair's also stuck to his apartment. So I asked him how he's dealing with that. Yeah, I'm optimistic, you know. Um, I'm just like, you know, let's not feed into the panic. Let's not feed into the, the scare mongering. Let's not watch the news too much. Let's, um, okay, it's out there. It's, it's serious. It's uh, cruel survival of the fittest in a way. Um, that being said, yeah, the way forward, well, I'd like to see uh, a positive way forward as far as like, you know, this is our moment. Yes. This, is, this is a golden opportunity to look at our mistakes, see where we've gone wrong during this great pause, as everyone's calling it. And uh, so, like, okay, how are we gonna? How are we gonna move forward? Are we? What are we gonna choose? What's important? You know, are we gonna. What's important? People, profit, um, climate. Um, it's yeah. Yesterday, I received a trailer of your new album, a very beautiful piece of video. It struck me like a knife. It's, it's breathtaking beautiful. Why did you want to send this before you release your album? Because it's, it's like I said, you know, this is our golden moment. This is, this is, this is our opportunity. This is, it's like a blank canvas. How are we going to paint it now? You know, um, let's remember this moment and, uh, yeah, going into a very intense city, built up city like London and seeing it deserted, it's very airy, it's beautiful and airy. And, um, but then, you know, I find that with images, you know, you put, you can change, you can bring your own thoughts and emotions to it when you place any piece of music to it. Um, and uh, it just happens that, you know, that actual that piece of music that I put to that, um, it's called Atoms. That's that's the name of the song. There are no letters on these keys. I cannot type the words that ease the pain. There are no figures on the floor. Last year I went to Chernobyl and that's the other footage that you can see in that in that little movie clip. And um, obviously in November last year, even though the um, pandemic was probably already spreading, we had no idea. So just going to Chernobyl and seeing this deserted city of Pripyat and walking around this uh, exclusion zone was was crazy airy. It was just absolutely bizarre. Um, and then to propel ourselves forward, you know, uh, four months and then find myself in the center of London, completely deserted, really made me think about uh, the two, the yeah. two, the two places and what happened in Chernobyl in the 80s and, and how that was a catastrophe, but it could have been much, much worse, you know, if that second um, explosion had happened. And I just thought, well, this is kind of interesting. A deserted London, a deserted Chernobyl, and the song is called Atoms. It, it's, um, it's beautiful. And well, as I said, it struck me like a knife. And one of the questions that I constantly have is, where are the people? Where are the people? <laughs> well, there, there was a few on bikes on Swiss <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Too many pills to choose. I've got the pill parts blue. 
How far are you with the album? Is it almost done? Is it? Yeah, like- it's almost done. Yeah, I'd say. Um, actually, I'm not going to put a date on it, but almost. I, I, we've got a single coming out on the 5th of June. That's called "Nothing in the Pot," and um, it's another very. It's my. Um, it's fundamentally about hope, actually. If you would summarize the uh, central idea of the new album. I think, like I said before, it's about uh, hope, but it's it's looking back and um, seeing kind of how crazy our life was and just kind of looking at it and sort of laughing at, yeah. at ourselves. Just going, wow, did we do that? You know, <laughs> why do we do that shit? You know, and yeah, in an optimistic, not too serious way, but still, um, I don't know, my music's pretty melancholic, as you know, um, so I don't know, I try not to get too, to get it sounding too uh, dark, but I don't know, it's good, it's dark, there's light, that's what, um, that's what, that's the sort of music I like when it has both. Blair, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you so much, and see you soon, and be well. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Blair Jollens, New Zealander calling from old London. Don't forget to check out his new single, Nothing in the Pot. It's out now. Over to America for a long time to meet a friend, William McCarthy, who used to be the singer of Augustine's. Somewhere in 2016-17, they decided to give it a break for a short while, and that's still lasting. William is working on his solo career. He has this beautiful single called Ballad of the Unemployed. Tony Robbins, Ballad for the Unemployed. You're a motivational speaker, right? So I decided to write you in the middle of the night. Tony Robbins, is it me you're looking for? Because I was once a rushing river, now I'm a sliver staring at a floor. I got left standing in God's taillights Just caught between some of my country's wrongs and rights Just a long line of almost babies and mites So greetings from the hole of a boat Under the decks of a mighty dream And a scream I walked home Sleepwalking when I lost my job again I've been having a discussion about Generation X yeah. With Generation X it was like we always It was very much about credibility Um, and keeping it real. And uh, I think the new generation, the millennials and Generation Z or Next or whatever, they're sort of about deconstructionism and keeping it surreal and strange and digital. But I don't know why I wrote a six and a half minute song. (laughs) But uh, for me, that's what had to be done. So here I am broke, caked in rust, dirt in my mouth by highway and dust. Are you listening, Tony Robbins? Your voice is really rough in this song. Mm. I love it. I love it. It's full of statements. And also the name of Tony Robbins. Why did you choose him as as a source of inspiration? He's this like tall, um, motivational, perfect man. He's successful. He speaks to the Dalai Lama and Russell Simmons. He's like the portrait. He has big white teeth like God's shoe shine. And he just seems like this perfect character that suburban people um, and probably suburban men 
probably think he has great sex life, that women like him, and he's this sort of success, this capitalist portrait of success. And finally, find some place to hide. But I lack security, Tony, can't seem to find my pride. And you said that happens from the inside out, but this is what I've been going on about. See, all I see is computer screens, kids all mixed up in these things. Porn, cell phones, drones, wars far from home. Boys returning from Afghanistan with eyes turned to stone. And to what? And for what? So put me on your mailing list. It's all so disconnected, rich white men protected. What are those Kardashians up to? I got very sad um, last year. And what had happened is, I don't know if you remember, uh, Scott Hutchinson from Frightened Rabbit had died. And he was a friend of mine and we toured together and, uh, and my band was friends with his band. And I think that I was so sort of obsessed with surviving that I was just playing concerts, concerts. I was flying all over the world playing um, solo. But when it started to get cold, I started to slow down with the shows. And I started thinking about Scott and I started thinking about how vulnerable, about vulnerability. And I was writing and I wrote it in one day. And I think that what, what I was thinking about was a person who feels like the things that were important to them are no longer valuable in society and that they've been left behind. And I just imagine this man sort of sitting in his house by himself um, in the Trump era with media fatigue and, and feeling vulnerable and, and becoming an imaginary friend. His, his friend becomes this motivational speaker guy, which is those are the type of people that Tony Robbins speaks to is the suburban man with the yeah. stomach and, you know, having problems with money. So he, this imaginary character became where he talks about the gentrification and healthcare in the country. So just thought I'd reach out to you and hope that heaven has a place for me. Cause down here I was so lonely. But hopefully I'll get work and get back on my feet. I got some leads I'm gonna follow up on next week. Tony, Tony, I'm just dreaming and driving far into a desert and burning my car. My dreams, my things, my driver's license. Hey Bill, let's talk a bit about the new album. Well, when will you release it? The album is called Wild Eyes. I, I am splitting the album into four parts. And for each different EP that I'm doing, I'm doing stories, videos, and it just, I felt like in the age of, of Spotify and all this, like it's, it's not fair anymore to do a record have it go out to the world and then do a video and you're done. Yeah. And I just want to do more work because I love the work, you know? Plus, so I'm, d I'm doing four part series. Yeah. Plus in other words, you're also um, explaining more about the songs. Yeah. You're showing more of yourself as well. So yeah. what you're actually doing, you're getting closer to your audience. Yes. And frankly, I think I've done records before where, like the second Augustine's record, I loved it. And when we got done, we did maybe three videos, some interviews, and that was it. <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, I think there's so much more that you could do with this. And to, for me as a writer to write that much, and then for it all to kind of be this, the visual support component is sort of over in four weeks. It just doesn't, it just the, it feels weird. So I'm doing it my way now. I got all your DVDs. In fact, the entire set. $69.95, not including tax, I bet. But I got some tickets to see you. Speak in a few weeks. They were a little steep, but it's important to me. No pain, no gain, no gain, no pain. I gotta stop going against the grain. I'm just out here standing in the rain. It's you and me, Tony. Yours truly. My last thing? Mm. The beard's gone. I know. I, I know I, I got you know in January 1st I said okay what am I terrible at because I'm going to make that my focus and I had eaten so much food and traveled so much that my body was all fucked up and I I, I just started dieting and exercising and I lost 50 pounds whoa yeah so I was like you know I think I could lose I could lose the um 
the Pablo Escobar. I think I'm just going to go cold face. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Okay, Bill, thanks a lot. Thanks from the heart. See you soon. Yes. All right. All the best to you, brother. Okay. I'm looking forward to Wild Eyes. Ooh, I'll send it to you, man. Bye. Be Bye. good, man. It's always a treat talking with William McCarthy from New York. And what a great single, The Ballad of the Unemployed. Wonderful stuff. Another record that I spin a lot is called Every Bad. It's made by London-based band Porridge Radio. Porridge Radio is fronted by Dana Margolin, songwriter, guitarist and singer. With her I talked about the songs but also about the characters in Porridge Radio. But first of all I wondered how an artist would call this year. Surprise year I guess. I mean like, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Trying not to focus on the bad aspect of it and instead focus on the like the potential of it just to be able to rest and write and work on new things and kind of consolidate all of the hard work of the last few years and yes yeah, I mean like being on tour would have been amazing <laughs> to be able to do but the fact that we can't I think there's a lot hopefully a lot of other good things will come out of not being able to do our other plans. Yeah. And do you manage to, to write easily in this situation? When I started, I was writing a lot, but actually lately I've just been working on stuff that I wrote before and demoing it with the band. And yeah, I think for me, the way I write is like, it's a very constant, process but there's lots of different parts of writing that come into one so like I'll write in my notebook and then I'll draw pictures and then I'll like sing little songs and I'll listen to things and I'll like meet up with people and go on walks and like take everything in and I'm constantly thinking about songwriting but then I'm not it's like I just I like the way that I can just kind of take everything in and then at one point like a song comes out of all those different things Sometimes I am just a child Writing letters to myself Wishing out loud you were dead And then taking it back Do you meet the other band members? Uh, not in person, because they are far away from me. But we talk a lot online, and especially with Sam, who plays drums, we've been demoing a lot of songs together. Like, so can you give me an example of that magic in the... Uh, rehearsing situation like I guess if I write a song and like the way that our band works is that I write all of our songs and then I bring the songs to the band and everybody adds parts and we arrange it and we change it a little bit and we like make it into a full band song and like sometimes I'll bring I'll bring like a guitar song just like chords that kind of just you know something like fairly simple to everyone and just like Georgie will just like write a keyboard part that completely changes the whole dynamic of the song and like the whole feeling that I thought it was suddenly it like adds another dimension to it or someone will just be like why don't we just like stop and then start again or like you know you just add little parts to it that make it really special and exciting you would describe the four characters of the band if i look at the video because i haven't worked with you guys yet so the only thing i can do is look at pictures or look at the video and of course what do you think it is i'd like to know the video is always what do we look like? <laughs> i see a very humble drummer there's a very adventurous keyboardist and there is a mate uh, a teammate uh, bass player on your left side. Is yeah. that correct or is it completely nonsense what I'm actually telling? I think that actually that does kind of resemble real life <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Somehow you managed to put that up. Yeah. Um, Georgie's always, Georgie's on keyboard and she's yeah. like, she plays in loads of bands and she's really just like excited about playing music all the time and she's very just like 
always dancing and singing and like really enthusiastic (laughs) (laughs) adventurous so yeah that's true and then like what were the other what did you say sam's humble (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. what do you mean by humble well he's sitting he's he looks very at ease and he's not like georgie who's very vivid and very present a lot of presence yeah i guess that is that is true he's like he wants to be at the drums he wants to like he wants to be like doing the task (laughs) he's like let's fucking go (laughs) let's play this um yeah Uh, yeah i see that (laughs) and then maddie teammate yeah definitely she's like a very solid like you know always yeah i think teammate is a really good good way to put it How do you see your own role in the band? You're always the front person, of course. So you have to do the interviews. You have to be in the middle at shoots. Uh, but how do you see it yourself? I find it quite hard to be. I think like I assumed the role of leader because I was writing the songs and singing them and like, I guess, playing like the main guitar parts. And like, I guess it was always my project, but I never really thought of myself as a band leader. And if anything, I find it quite difficult to be at the front all the time or like it took me a while to be like oh wait I need to like be in control of this thing I need to I need to be the leader of this and that didn't that's something that kind of like it happened over time without me realizing that that's what I had to do and then when I realized I had to do it I was like oh fuck interest in you guys because there is something in your music there is tension there is energy in your music and i love that thank you very much thank you very much i'm happy to hear it (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm I'm really happy with how people are experiencing it and like just seeing people online posting about it and talking about what it means to them or like sending us messages so yeah it just feels very overwhelming and really really amazing that it's reached this many people and the people actually like it oh yeah i also read the name of nirvana somewhere in one of the reviews uh, and they well they often tend to refer to the energy i don't i feel like when we're compared to anyone I always just think like, yeah, okay, I I understand, I guess. I liked that band at one point. That's cool. I don't think I really like take it in. I don't know if it means that much to me. I feel like comparing bands is a way to kind of explain it to somebody who doesn't know what it is yet. And to it's like to compare us to Nirvana might then make somebody like, oh, I like Nirvana, I'm going to listen to that. But for me, it's like... I feel like I have so many influences, so many bands that I've loved over the years. Like I find it hard to pinpoint anything anyway or choose a favorite and yeah i think comparisons are kind of helpful things for other people but they don't really mean that much to me well thank you very much dana enjoy your day today thank you you too and stay healthy you too okay. good luck bye. <laughs> bye. bye dana margolin of porridge radio i highly recommend their new album every bad That's it for now. We'll be back in four weeks from now with more friends around the world. Don't forget to subscribe. Watch any 2Meet video that you like. See you soon. Thanks.